Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of What's in a Performance, the series where I take scores, performances, videos, recordings, you name them, break them apart, analyze them, to take a look at what goes on behind the scenes to create the incredible recordings and performances that we love listening to. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Valentina Lasitsa playing Chopin's Minute Waltz. I believe it is Minute Waltz because it, I think the French name translates to Waltz of the Puppy and Minute Waltz doesn't really make sense because it's pretty hard to play in under a minute, especially with any sort of decent musicality. And so I think Minute makes a lot more sense in the name. In fact, I think even in Lucita's uh, video description, she says, please don't think that I'm going to be playing this in under a minute because that would be pretty disastrous. And so without further ado, the one and only Valentina Lucita, who's incredibly versatile virtuosic if you've heard any of her playing before you know what I'm talking about let's get it all right Valentina Lasitza performing Chopin's minute waltz let's get it she has a trill at the beginning oh my gosh <laughs> okay Okay, let's pause there and talk about it real quick since this is a very short piece. One thing that I want to know is how incredibly light, and this is both in the right hand and the left, so... And this makes sense, right? This makes sense because in order to play this quickly and to play with this sort of clarity, you have to be this uh, light. Oh my gosh. Okay, first off, look at the right hand. This is like pure finger action that's coming through in order to keep it clear and to keep it light. If we add arm, if we add too much rotation from the wrist, some rotation from the wrist can help us go a little bit faster depending on the movements and depending on the way that the run is structured. But if we're adding too much like arm weight, then it slows us down and creates a more glued together feel that we don't want. The left hand is also very fingery, right? It's, it's different because you're playing a chord, right? And you can't like, Put your hand down on the keys and then like lift all your fingers like this although you can right but it's a little bit different from, from like lifting like this it becomes more of a wrist motion which is exactly what's going on when she's landing on the bottom note right in order to give it a little bit of articulation you can see her hand come up a little and the finger drops a little there's a little bit more of a finger lift there by nature of playing that d flat and f right as she goes back and forth but then when she gets to these uh, bigger chords up top the way she does that is by using the wrist this motion that i've talked about before when we're playing octave scales when we're playing big octaves and stuff like that this is where we first learned this is combine that with more uh, more emphasis on the fingers and you get something incredibly light and incredibly speedy as well but also note the phrasing right when she gets to B flat the way that she articulates that it keeps it light is by the wrist lift. I've talked about the wrist lift literally in like every single one of these videos I think it for the past like few months again it is when we do the slur is a down right on the wrist to add weight and then up rotating about the knuckle to come up with lightness, right? And there's several ways to apply this and the way that she's playing it here is by using this up motion to drive the finger into the key, but also lift off so that it doesn't become too heavy. And that gives a little, just a little bit more of that like articulation, a little bit more emphasis. And so that's where she also pulls the tempo slightly, right? To also accentuate that. She slows down a little, right? And the fingers coming up and down like this. A little bit of, like aided by the wrist, right? As we just discussed. But again, very finger heavy. Lots of finger from, from movement. Again, right? When she draws back down, the notes that are, have emphasis are the ones that have a little bit more weight, right? One thing to note is this is a waltz. <laughs> this is a waltz. Too many people are too concerned with playing too quickly, right? And you lose the It's written into the score of the left hand, right? But we want to feel that. This is obviously played at a tempo that nobody would dance the waltz to, right? Because you 
be, I don't know, you'd probably be breakdancing at that point. You still want to feel the jaunty nature, a bit of that like movement, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. And let the left hand come out a little bit more. So the right hand, the way that Lassis is playing it is that it's very much so, you know, like big, like overarching like phrase. Like, but the left hand, because it's like articulate, is around the same dynamic as the right. But again, the texture is different. The texture is different. And the way that we interpret both are different as well, which is why she can do that. And back up slightly to get to the next section. And this is why I chose this interpretation, partially. Because she takes so much time here, and there, I feel like there aren't that many that do. It is quite beautiful. Oh my gosh, this part is really good. <laughs> Big question mark, right, and a big slowdown. Okay, so let's talk about this section. First off, change, drastic change from before. It becomes a lot more glued together, right? Right, the placing of the notes is very, very delicate. We've talked about placing notes in these videos before, but before, when she reached these notes, right, this B flat, she did that by lifting the wrist and driving a little bit into the key for a little bit of that, like, articulation, a little bit of that attack. For these, all of a sudden, now it's a lifting of the finger and it's coming down with a little bit of wrist going into the key in that sort of motion. Like... I'm exaggerating. But it's like that. The fingers are lifted high, but because it's slower, it doesn't produce the same sparkliness as before. Now the finger lifts are to deliberately place the notes, deliberately press each key down with the exact force and ex at the exact time and place that we want it to. Whereas before she was lifting the fingers to get a little bit more of that pepperiness in the way that she was playing. Also notice how the pedal has become much stronger. Before she only goes down the pedal at certain points, perhaps at the beginning of each measure, right? To articulate the Give it a little bit of touch of on beat so that she doesn't have to become too heavy while jumping back and forth, right? And she can maintain it relatively similar playing throughout but now the pedal is being used to connect notes right now it's being used as a way to draw things together and especially with the left hand being a little bit more gluey as well a little bit more of that rotation into the keys to give it a little bit more weight so we back up a little getting into the section this is so short that I, whenever i back it up we just back to, to start <laughs> it is really singing right Listen to the delicateness of how she places each and every single one of the notes. And we still feel the one, two, three, one, two, th but the pulse is shortened, right? The big pull. Bum, bum, bum. Again, we talk about pull pushes and pulls with tempo. It's all about breathing and that sort of like tension that's being built and then the release, the catharsis of that tension. As we get, da, 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 da. we feel the tension. It's almost like we're holding with bated breath and then, exhale right the sigh right and that's where the tempo like slowly drifts back to where it originally was and now change the texture right a little bit more bouncy the grace notes seem to indicate this in the score and you see the fingers lifting very high right again this is all for that connectedness in the places that she wants it to the rotation to help with adding weight and to draw connectedness together between the notes Big pull. Some people crescendo there. Lasisa does not. It's even faster than before. Or maybe it only appears faster since she cut out of the slow section. Same comments as before, right? Oh, but the last run though. Now it's becoming heavier, right? More connected. Very sparkly. Towards the end, here are the runs here, right? This is still very sparkly like the beginning. Building that speed, right? It's not rushing, we're pushing forward, right? That's the difference. We're moving forward. Think of tempo as movement. 
You hear the bottom note, right, as to accentuate each measure? That's his own melody line. That's why he's getting all the attention. Heavier, right? You can hear it become heavier, but you can also see it become heavier from the way she's playing. Landing from higher up and like landing and sticking for longer, right? With a little bit more weight added into the key. And a little bit stronger pedal. And a little bit more drawn together. But the notes. Perhaps a little bit of weight going into keys, that's how. That was quite a dazzling performance. There's a lot to think about, right? Even for such a short piece like this, uh, how do I maintain like this jovial nature? How do I maintain the waltzy feel? How do I achieve the technicality, but also make it like sparkly and not like uh, this like gluey mess, right? And smeary mess with the pedal. How do I keep the pedal clean? And how do I change for this uh, middle B section and make it sound beautiful in the way that it needs to be? All these things have to come together into this sort of performance and Lisa does it incredibly well. As usual, we're always applying the same things over and over again. We're always going to be talking about when we lift the fingers, why we lift the fingers. We're always going to be talking about why we rotate the wrist, why we add arm weight, why we add body weight, all these things. But it's a matter of using them appropriately in different times and places in order to get the specific sounds that we're going for. All right, and that about does it for this video. It's always super cool to hear all the different interpretations of a piece. And of course, this is a piece that I'm sure many of you are trying to learn. So hopefully some of the things that I said were beneficial to you. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, Video or found it helpful, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you would like to join a community of musicians or people who are very passionate about music and discuss music and all these things, or talk about YouTube things, I guess, as well, then consider joining my Discord because that's exactly what's going on there. If you'd like to hear me do more of this analysis and other people's playing right now, you should click right here. Or if you'd like to hear me play, you should click right here. But anyways, it's been a really great time listening to this piece and bringing it apart. And until next time, everybody, peace. Thank you.